In this video, you're going to see how easy it is to add interactive dashboards and business intelligence to any HTML JavaScript application. You'll learn how to add interactive features like the ability to change charts on the fly, to do time series forecasts, linear regression, detecting outliers, interactive filters, as well as a full edit experience where you can create your own dashboards or your users can create their own dashboards with zero code. Let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is to download the Reveal SDK. Go to revealbi.io, click the Download SDK button, fill out your information and click Download. Once you download the SDK and install it, you will have a folder on your hard drive under C Users Public, Public Documents, Infragistics, Reveal. In this folder, you have the SDK folder, which has samples for WPF, Windows Forms, and ASP.NET Core. What we're going to use in this demo is the Web JavaScript library, which lights up the client of Reveal. So I'm going to go to the JS folder, Client. I'm going to right click on the Reveal, Infragistics Reveal JS, and I'm going to copy this. Next, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in a folder, which we're going to use to create our dashboard. So here I have a folder on my hard drive called Embedded BI App. I have an index.html, and I'm going to go ahead and paste in our JavaScript file. So let's go ahead and right click on index.html, and I'm going to open this with Visual Studio Code. Here I've just got a default HTML file, which has the head and the body tags. For this demo, I've added snippets in Visual Studio Code. You can get those snippets right in the notes for this video, as well as this sample on GitHub. So everything you need is in the notes for this video. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add a dependency on a CSS file for one of the editors that's within Reveal. So we use something called Quill.js, and what Quill.js does is it allows you to have formatted editing. We use this in our formula editor so you can do custom formulas on field types. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to the body and in the body we need to add a div and this div is going to be the container for the dashboard. So it's just a standard div. You can see that this div ID is called reveal view and essentially this is going to take up the entire height and width of the screen. The next thing we need to do is add the JavaScript dependencies, and this includes that reveal.js file that we just copied into this folder. So for this, we're going to go ahead and insert our JavaScript dependency links. And there's a few things going on here. The first thing is we're using jQuery. We're also using the quill.js, which I referenced earlier in the style sheet. We're also using day.js to perform some day functions. And then, of course, we've got the reveal.js file. This is actually going to be in the root of this folder, so we're gonna get rid of this subfolder. And then the last thing we need to do is to actually load a dashboard into this reveal view div, and we're gonna do that with a simple function. So let's go ahead and use our last snippet here, and the last snippet will insert this JavaScript. And there's a couple things happening here that we'll go over, so let me move this over to make it look a little bit better. But the first thing is we need to set the base URL of where our Reveal dashboards exist. So for the web, Reveal includes a client SDK and a server SDK. I have a server SDK already running in the cloud. There's a link in the notes for this video which will show you how to create your own server using .NET Core or Java. Doesn't matter, you have options there. The second thing that we're going to do is use the Reveal SDK settings and make sure all the fonts are loaded for the dashboard. This will make sure we don't end up with that weird Times New Roman rendering that you get sometimes on websites when they don't load properly. And then we simply call the load dashboard method. Up on the server, there are a few dashboards that you can play around with. There's a sales dashboard, a marketing dashboard, a manufacturing dashboard, and a campaigns dashboard. So all you need to do to play around is maybe just type in manufacturing here, and now that'll load the manufacturing dashboard. And then we are going to set the reveal view to the reveal view div that we added, and then we are going to tell it what dashboard to load. And that's really all we need to do. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna right click. 
I'm gonna open this in my default browser. The manufacturing dashboard has loaded up and you can see that we have a full dashboard with different types of visualizations based on the data that's in our data set. In this case, it's a file coming from the server. I believe it's an Excel file or a SQL Server file. But what's nice about this is you can look at visualizations in various ways. So I can expand this visualization automatically based on the data. You have the ability to drill up or drill down into data. I can change the type of visualization that's being rendered. So maybe I don't like something, I can swap it out. I can also get a table view of the data, including automatic aggregates. Across the top, you'll see there's a bit of a breadcrumb here. So you can see that you can click on the breadcrumb areas to go back to the visualization. You notice this saved the state of that visualization. Let's go back and expand this again. I want this to be a nice spline chart. And what I'm gonna do is drill down to May. You can see that my visualization renders nicely, but let's say that I don't want this data to display for units lost. I can easily go and edit this visualization. I can remove units lost. And let's say I wanna look at operators available. And maybe I want to change this to drill down to the month. And in this particular visualization, you'll notice I have a data filter by date. So I'm gonna click this and it's set for last 30 days. Let's go ahead and say all time. I'm gonna update my filter. My visualization has now changed. I can click the checkbox and there we go. And at the same time, I still have all of these features available like changing how the visualization actually looks, the type of visualization, in this case, a line chart. The globe icon here allows you to do things like time series forecasting, linear regressions, detecting outliers. So if I wanna forecast this for six periods uh, forward, I can select that and you can see that this is my forecasted data that shows up in the visualization. All of this is built in. You don't have to write any code to do it. Your users don't have to do anything special. It's automatic in the client SDK. The nice thing is if you don't want users to change the visualization, part of the API lets you remove the visualization switcher. You can also remove options like the globe to do time series, regression, and forecasting. And overall, you can remove anything that happens to be in an overflow menu. Now, if I minimize this, you can also see when I select this item, we've got a few options here like exporting dashboards to images, PowerPoints, PDF, Excel. You can copy and paste visualizations from dashboard to dashboard. You can save the dashboard as another file and maybe start over. The richness of the API gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can offer your end users. And in this case, if I wanna add a new visualization, I'll go ahead and click the plus visualization side. You can see this is pointing to some cloud-based data. So I'm gonna click this reveal sample data. Let's stick with our manufacturing data here. I can get a peek at what's available in this data set. So yeah, this looks good to me. I'll click the checkbox, I'll select that data. And now I'm back into this visualization editor. And from here, it's as simple as a drag and drop to start seeing what my data looks like and then deciding what type of visualization I want to show for this. Check the box and you can see that if I scroll to the bottom, here is my new visualization for operators available. So just like that, in a few simple steps, we went ahead and added a fully interactive dashboard with BI and analytics to a JavaScript and HTML application with the Reveal SDK. To get notified of when we release new videos on how to use the Reveal SDK, click the subscribe button. Also, check out our playlist, which has great videos on how you can start embedding BI in your applications today.